Hey everyone, it's Suzanne, and I want to thank you for joining us for the So Susie podcast, where we help you build a business out of the hobby you love. You will also be able to get the show notes and the links we reference by visiting us at sosusiepodcast.com. Can you believe it is almost August? Our kids go back to school in a couple of weeks, and I am hoping that our monsoon season that includes rain hits us sooner rather than later. One, because we need the rain badly. And two, as soon as monsoon season is over, fall will be close behind, and with fall comes craft fair season. For those of you who plan to attend a craft fair this fall, today's podcast is all for you. We are going to discuss supplies needed, decorating your booth, promotion for your goodies, how to stand apart from the other crafters, type of cards and goodies to sell, and pricing. First and foremost, you need a way to accept payment. Just like we discussed in yesterday's podcast, having the right payment gateway is critical. For craft shows, you essentially have two options, cash and credit card. I would stay away from checks, period, the end. Don't try and sway my opinion otherwise, because when you get a $125 check from some cute little lady and you feel flattered that she bought 25 cards from you, and that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the check won't clear, you will painfully agree with me. Stick to cash and plastic. When it comes to cash, think about how much the price of your average item is. Is it $4, 5 10 $20? Do you have any items in the single digit denomination that would require $1 bills? If you made it easy on yourself and your customers and everything is priced by fives, then you will be extremely lucky and not need to bother with ones. If you do have off numbers, your best bet when deciding on how much money to keep in your money box is to factor in that most people will be coming from the ATM, which means you will need to be able to make change for 20s. I would recommend having at the very least 30 $1 bills, 10 fives, six tens, three twenties. This will total up to $200 in loose cash. This should more than cover you in the off chance that the first sale you make is the lady who only has a $50 bill and wants to buy your $5 card. If you do not have to worry about ones, then trade off those 30 ones and get six more fives instead. I will have a list of money in our show notes, so don't worry about trying to find a pen. I have you covered. Personally, I would highly consider signing up for a Square account so you can accept credit card payments. First, it's free to sign up. Second, you get the card reader for free and it interfaces with your phone. Simply type in the total, swipe the card, and you have money. Square will then deposit the money into your bank account the next business day, and fees are super low. Just as a side note, I just received information from PayPal and they also have a card reader that syncs right in with your PayPal account. So instead of just using Square, if you don't want to have two different payment solutions with you, use PayPal. If you already have a PayPal account, go ahead, order their PayPal reader. It not only connects with your phone and your PayPal account, but If someone there at the craft show has a PayPal account, they can actually send you money via their PayPal account into your PayPal account. Thank you to Jason for letting us know this wonderful tip on the PayPal card readers, and we hope you have a successful craft fair season. And the best part is, you do not have to worry about losing a customer because they don't have enough cash on hand. And if you happen to get that $50 first customer of the day, you can politely ask her if she wouldn't mind paying by credit card versus cash since she just opened up. It's a win-win for everyone involved. Once you have your payment options figured out, let's talk about the other items you're going to need. Cash box. That goes without saying. You need someplace secure to keep your money. Apron with pockets. This is great for holding your phone, pen, business cards, square reader, and scratch paper, just in case. Besides, they look cute and the people coming into your booth will know you are the lady behind the craft. Business cards. 
do not forget your business cards. And yes, I've done this way too many times to count. Business cards should be on the table and easy to retrieve. You should also have a couple in your pocket to hand out to people who may want to get in contact with you for custom orders. Pens. You never know when you may need an extra pen, so have two just in case one walks off. Scratch paper. You may run into someone who is looking for something special and you want to write them a note or yourself one so you don't forget. A little notepad will be perfect to tuck into your apron pocket and will give you a base to write on. Inventory sheet. Before you head out to the craft show, take inventory. Inventory of the cash in the cash box and the items you are selling. Depending on how anal you are, you can do a simple inventory of 150 cards, 30 candy tubes, 20 coasters, 10 gift packs, or... If you would like to see which type of cards sell better than others for the next show, then break out the items by occasion. 20 Christmas cards, 15 birthday, 5 anniversary, 15 fairy cards, 5 baby cards, 30 snarky girlfriend cards. Print it out on the computer and clip it on a clipboard. Have a column for starting inventory and another column for ending inventory. Inevitably, the end of the show will be dead. This is the perfect time to start taking inventory of what you have left after the show. It makes it so much easier than doing it when you get home. Because the only thing you're going to want to do is kick up your feet and have a Captain and Coke and watch Superman Man of Steel. And you are going to deserve that little piece of heaven. So having that inventory sheet ready at the show is going to save you a lot of headache later. Just wait until after you get home to tally up your cash. There is nothing more rude than counting your money in front of other vendors and customers. Phone charger. Hopefully, you will have a power supply nearby if the show is long. If it is an extra cost and you plan on accepting payments via Square, purchase the power supply option. You do not want to run out of juice in your phone halfway through the show. Plus, you're going to want to take pictures and post them on social media while you are there. So bring your charger and extension cord. If you're going to be outside, get a pop-up tent. They really aren't that expensive and you'll be glad you did. The tent will not only protect you, but it will protect the items you are selling. Little snacks. Peanuts, granola bar, Snickers, crackers, bottles of water, anything that is little, non-assuming, or messy will be good to have on hand with you in the booth. The last thing you want to do is have a mouthful of hamburger from the snack bar when a customer comes walking up. And by all means, stay away from the onions. No one wants to smell your onion breath. Keep gum or mints in your mouth at all times. Seriously, bad breath. No bueno. These are just some of the basics you should always have on hand when going to a craft fair. Depending on what you're planning on selling, you may need to tweak it a bit, but... For the basic craft show survival kit, these should get you by. As far as decorating your booth, this is going to depend on a lot of factors. Are you inside or outside? How big is your space? Do you have a table or a 10 by 10 booth? Is this a big crowded event or a small and intimate one? Are you selling items that are fragile or can they take a beating? Do you have help with setting up your booth or is it just you? How long of a trek is it from your car to the entrance? And how long do you have to set up? Essentially, you need to know your surroundings, yourself, and how much time you're going to have. If you are by yourself and only have an hour to set up, having an elaborate booth is probably out of the question. However, that does not mean you have to be boring either. First, know your brand. Even if you are selling cards, you have a brand, and that brand is you. We talk a lot about different ways to differentiate yourself in our Price Market Sell Your Handmade Cards online class. So I won't be getting into that too much, but think about the types of cards you sell, your business card design, the colors that speak to your personality. What are they? How can you incorporate those things into your booth design? Maybe your colors are pink and green. Wear a pink and green apron. 
Have green overlays over the tablecloths. Make a slew of pink and green cards to be the focal point of the booth. Have a custom sign printed. Vistaprint does a great job and they are cheap. Consider having a sign made to hang in front of your table or booth. Add interest by having different height levels on the tables. Use decorative boxes from Michaels or make your own using the colors from your theme. If your focus is fairy cards, make some fairy jars with twinkling LED lights that are battery operated to add interest. Get creative, have fun, and make sure that you have time to set it all up in the time allotted. Your best bet is to have a dry run at home a week or so before the show. Tape out the booth size in your living room, set up the table, decorate your space, see how long it will take you to set everything up, and pack up. Buy some durable totes that are easy for you to carry. Don't rely on someone else to help you, even if you know they will be there. It would totally suck if you physically couldn't move part of your display into the building and your husband got called into work and couldn't help. I also recommend having your own tablecloths. You're going to want to hide the nasty tables if tablecloths aren't provided for you. A black or other neutral color that will provide a nice backdrop for your items is safe and easy. I would stay away from white as grubby little hands could get them nasty. And who wants to wash tablecloths at the end of every show? You have Henry Cavill to watch, not laundry. You can also use this as an opportunity to bring in your colors into the booth if you're limited on time, space, and money. Tablecloths are a cheap thrill, and you can also find some colorful ways to jazz them up. If you are a big flower card kind of gal, stamp up some big peonies, watercolor them, cut them out with your scan and cut, and pin them to the tablecloths so it looks like you have your own personal flower garden. It's all about knowing your brand and how you can easily decorate your space and look different from the other vendors. Plus, making your space look a bit different will make for a great photo op. When it comes to craft fairs, do not rely on the craft fair to market you. You need to start thinking of ways to promote yourself before you go to the craft show. You want people who want to buy your cards coming to the show. You should be their draw. As soon as you register for a craft fair, start posting on Facebook and Instagram. Take pictures of some of the items you're going to have for sale. You want people to get excited Tease them over the coming weeks, and as the date gets closer, post more. You want people to remember when it is. Consider creating an event on Facebook and invite friends and family to the event. Post special pictures that they only get to see. Consider putting together a giveaway, and if they show up, they win a special prize. Even if it is just something small. Promote yourself. The day of, take a picture of your booth all set up and blast it out to everyone so they know where to find you. Maybe do something for the first five people from your event page who show up at your booth. If you're planning on making a wall of flowers, consider making extras and include pins on the back so the people who buy cards from you can pin the flowers onto their shirts. This is a great way to have the customers advertise for you. Think outside of the box. What kind of cool visual giveaway can you do that will be cheap and easy? Having something wearable as a promotional giveaway is not the only way to make yourself stand apart from the other vendors. And this is really where you need to let your creativity take reign. If you are participating in a strictly Christmas-themed craft fair where everything must be Christmas, dress up like an elf or Mrs. Claus. Have little candies wrapped in special gift boxes to give away to customers. If it is a traditional craft fair, make yourself a little maker space at the booth where you can make card fronts or gift tags. Use your Misty so everything is simple, compact, and easy. When people watch you make a card, they're going to want to do it too, or at the very least, want to buy cards or gift tags. If you decide to make gift tags while you sit there, hand them out to people when they come to look at your goodies. It's cheap, easy, and it can pack a punch. Plus, when it's quiet, you will get a lot done. If you have a lot of cards with critters colored, 
Stamp a bunch ahead of time. Bring your Copics and color while you sit. There is nothing more cool than watching something go from lines to color. And if they're small, the impact will be greater since they can watch you complete the critter. Just think, you may just inspire another crafter. And people will be talking about the lady who is coloring. You can also base what you do around the items you are selling in the booth. Similar to our Christmas themes example, depending on what you're selling can dictate what you do to set yourself apart. We go into a lot more depth in our price market sell class, but you truly need to know your location, environment, and customers. Why are they there? What is the theme of the fair? What is the timing for the event? If the craft fair is at a church, have some religious cards and bookmarks available. If the theme is Christmas, have stocking stuffers, Christmas cards, gift packs of cards, gift tags, ornaments, small items that can be used for gift exchanges. Why are the people coming? Is there another event going on in tandem with the Arts and Craft Festival? In our online class, we talk about art festivals at wineries. If that is the case, make sure you have plenty of wine-related cards and items. Snarky girlfriend cards also do extremely well. Let's face it, people are shopping and drinking at the same time. They are being silly and stopping off at a booth that has snarky cards is a huge win. The last point is pricing. Honestly, you need to price your cards appropriately. If you even consider pricing a shaker card for $2, I am going to reach through your listening device and gib smack you on the back of the head. I have been selling cards since 2008, and there is a right way and a wrong way. And when you sell them the wrong way, you ruin it for everyone else. And that is just not cool. And if you are still trying to justify your ridiculousness with, I just want to make back what I have into it and it makes me so happy. I'm going to vomit on your shoes. Don't. You want to make cards and donate them? Please do it. You are a crafty saint. But don't undercharge to where the rest of us have to suffer for your ignorance. Yeah, I went there. Now, I wouldn't browbeat you if I didn't have a solution for your pricing issue. Most of us have no clue how much it costs for us to make a card. And who has time to figure it all out? Well, guess who did? Me. I actually created a pricing calculator for card making. It prices everything out for you and it even gives you suggested retail price on what you could potentially charge. Super bad A, huh? You can get the calculator for free when you take the price market sell your handmade card class, or you can purchase it separately. It's only eight bucks, so it's a cheap thrill to make sure you aren't losing your shirt when it comes to your products. If you're thinking you would like to make more gift packs than individual cards, then I definitely recommend listening to our Benefits of Creating Card Gift Packs podcast. Not only do we break down some of the benefits, but we also talk about pricing and Henry Cavill. Because Superman is just the hottest thing ever, and I don't get out so much, so a girl must have a muse, and he is certainly mine. One more thing on pricing. Take a hard look at how much it will cost you for a booth and determine how many cards you will need to sell to recoup the cost. And when I say how many cards, that means at your cost, not at retail. If a booth is going to cost you $150, Consider that your average card cost is two bucks. If you were selling it for $4, you will need to sell 75 cards to just cover the cost of the booth. That's not making any money, just covering costs. Consider selling more gift packs or bowing out from the more pricey shows and stick to the $20 to $50 fares. If you would like more information on how to sell your handmade cards, I highly recommend that you take the Price Market Sell Your Handmade Cards online class. There is a wealth of information in the seven-day course, and you'll be more than ready for the craft fair season coming up. We will have more information in our show notes, and if you are planning on participating in craft fairs this year, let us know in the comments what you're looking forward to most. Now, today's Friday tip 
is by Marcy Jo Snee from Stamp Junkies. Don't compare your work to others. Be inspired, motivated, and thankful for the opportunity to learn from your crafting peers. After all, you may inspire others with your style. Be true to yourself. Make what you love, not necessarily the new trend. The same can be said for everything you do. From the cards that you make to inspiring those who watch you make cards with your Misty at the craft fairs or coloring critters. You are you. And there is not another you in all the world. Embrace your style. Do what you love. Don't compare yourself to the next crafter because at the end of the day, they are not you. And you are a badass. So until next time, this is Suzanne, and you have been listening to the So Susie podcast. Happy stamping!